welcome to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 27. We're doing the show as part of Paul.com's episode 300 in an effort to raise money for breast cancer research. Actually, if our Stogie Geeks listeners want to go on over to paul.com.com, that's P A U L D O T C O M.com forward slash 300, that's the number 300. You can go there, there's donation links in the top left and right hand corners of the screen. Go place your donation. I'm joined by several members of the regular Stogie Geeks crew and several non-standard members of the Stogie Geeks crew. Um, we have a cigar of the week, and we also have a, a general lunchtime cigar that I've been passing out. So uh, we'll get started by introducing uh, the illustrious Mr. Tim Mugarini, who's here with us. Welcome, Tim. I never described that way. Hello, everybody. You know, I did link back to the, um, the show notes, too, from the StogieGeeks.com page, so mm-hmm. if anybody has trouble finding it, just go to Stogie Geeks, last post is a there. So. Stogie will get you there. Ben is in the house. Welcome, Ben. Thank you. Good to be here. Ben was uh, responsible for uh, getting the food for today. We're doing it all day from 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, 6 p.m. podcast. Not 6 a.m., 6 p.m. Uh, so we're out here for eight hours, and Ben uh, gave us, uh, got us some fabulous food. Got us he also deal. tested everything for poison. So yes, it's good. It's very poison good. free. <laughs> Uh, Darren is in here in the house. Uh, Darren smoking cigars. Welcome, Darren. Howdy, howdy. Uh, Mr. Josh Corman is uh, is here. He's got his lunchtime cigar lit, half lit, sort of. Is it all the way lit? Hold on, let me see. Hold up the end of that. Yeah, yeah, you're good. He's good. He's he's professional. He was well trained. Welcome, Josh, <laughs> to the Stogie Geek Show. Thank you. Uh, Dave, the AV guy, is here. Dave's getting ready to, uh, I think, light his cigar. Uh, he's got his lunchtime cigar, I'm eating and he needs some some uh, accoutrements, as it were. So the uh, the general lunchtime cigar that we were just uh, we were just passing out is a La Aurora 107, the Toro size. I thought it was great lunchtime kind of smoke. Yeah, medium body and strength. Had I remembered to buy a box of our regular lunchtime cigar, which I thought may be a little too overpowering for people. Yeah, at lunchtime. yeah, yeah. So that's why I had I kind of had two. So we did the La Aurora 107. Toro size, which is a great medium-bodied smoke. It's got probably over a year of age in my humidor. Um, ben, your first impressions? Well, I've, I've smoked these before, and uh, I can say uh, for the money and um, for the smoke, it's definitely a great value. I, I always enjoy smoking these cigars. It reminds me of the um, 100, an- 100 Años. Yes. yes. It's, I want to very... say MSOP, these are around $6 and change, right? Yeah. So. yeah. I got those on auction, so likely I did even better than that. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, um, let's see. The Cigar of the Week, La Duena by my father. This was one of my... I'm going to talk a lot about this cigar because I'm like, I'm really in love with this cigar. Your heart, huh? I'm, yeah, uh, I'm like totally I, I, I like agree. hook, line, and sinker. Stogie Santa's in the house. Welcome, Stogie Santa. Stogie Santa's got his bag of La Duena. Yes, yes, and yes. And we're just getting ready to talk about it. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this cigar because oh, yeah, there, there's a lot of interesting things, I think, about this cigar. First... I want to say that uh, the lovely Janny Garcia had a hand in blending and coming up with the concept for this cigar. Now, Stogie Santa, first, welcome to the show. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, now, did you personally got a chance to speak with Janny about, about this cigar, is that correct? Yes. Oh, so I'm going to turn it over to you, because uh, I know nothing. I, uh, neither do I. I always pretend that I do. Ah, to get <laughs> Stogie Santa some headphones. Uh, it was a collaboration with Pete and... Jamie and they uh, cut together. As you know what it, what it stands for, correct? Email owner. Is that a yeah. translation of the owner? The owner. Yes. Yeah, right. Gotcha. And uh, it, this cigar, I guess Paul and I have come. Well, you seem to like the, the belly, and sure. Tim, you like the the shorter. Uh, the short, short belly, belly was my favorite thus far, but I have not tried the full size belly. Uh, yet. Okay, uh, I really this is my favorite. Mine too, and I have I not agree. tried the short size belly and or the short robusto, which I have. One of each in the line sampler that I... I have done Lonsdale with Mark Maloney. I thought that was pretty good, but I'm, I'm siding with Stogie Santa on, on this one. So, they got together, and this is what they came up with. This is blends, uh, the blender, both Jamie and... and oh, so, Pete Jaime did. Garcia and Pete Johnson right. worked together. This is something he had the name for for a while. Uh, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Right, right, right. So, again... Um, a great, great job. I, I really, really, I think this is one of my favorite smokes that came out of 
the shelf. Yeah, mine Personally too. Speaking. I mean, you probably smoke more of the new ones that have come out than I have, but mm-hmm. I am so far in agreement with you right. uh, that this, and even this particular size. Oh, absolutely. It's really absolutely. just awesome. And like I said, hopefully I sent a little uh, IM to uh, Jose and, and Jeremy, who uh, work with my fathers and the rest of people I know there. Uh, if you're listening, thank you very much for uh, putting out such great smokes. But I, again, back to the blend. Uh, Connecticut Broadleaf, a lot, I just find this a lot of La Casita, uh, very, very familiar. La Casita Criolla, yeah. uh, which was a pure Connecticut Broadleaf. Right. This one, though, uh, I'll read uh, from the show notes here. The wrapper's Connecticut Broadleaf. The binder and filler are both a mixture of Connecticut Broadleaf and Nicaragua tobacco from the My Father uh, Farms. Right, and, and what I find about what this doesn't have that dryness in my palate. It, it just, Agree. Uh, yeah, I just really think that that's the major component to me personally. Also, it burns better than like Yeah, oh, absolutely. Way better. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it, I think that Nicaraguan tobacco helped it out both flavor. I think flavor wise, I think uh, taste as far as dryness goes, and I think burn and construction and the burn and construction of these is. I smoked tons of them. Uh, I, I, you know, I wanted to smoke something new the other night, and I was like, well, I'm going to smoke another La Duena Pelicoso <laughs> because I just love them so yeah. much. It's just they're so awesome. And, and what I really enjoy, I'm not, sometimes you're at the, uh, the show, and you grab a smoke, and you're saying, wow, phenomenal. You get back home, you get the shipment. Sometimes there's a change. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Not this. Mm-hmm. Not this at all. It delivers every time. Really, really, really pleasantly surprised with this, this smoke. Now, I, I read that this is based on the La Crescita. Right. Real, and, that right. That's correct. And also, what's the other one? Uh, help me out. I got a brain cramp. The other, uh, what the, what the number five is the number one that I smoke. La Riqueza? La Riqueza. I, I tell you, I can taste that in the cigar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the cocoa up front. I, you know, and, and again, a lot of people. Yeah, and, and uh, Paul, I guess. Did you see that connection that Stogie and Santa I have? Like, all he has to say <laughs> is number one, number two, and snap his fingers. And I'm like, <laughs> right, right. oh, La Riqueza. Yeah, yeah, La Riqueza. <laughs> That's kind of that's, that's, that's kind of yeah. we've been uh, uh, spending a little too much time yeah, together. Yeah, there, I think so. <laughs> but and again, uh, I think we're we're stealing someone's line of all I was talking about. People saying chocolate profile, I don't get that. I, I get a sweetness, I, but uh, one you were saying a blogger or so, maybe a I blogger. believe I want to say it was a cigar smoker dot com. Okay, uh, yeah. So we want to talk about the flavor profile. Now I smoked a couple of them, and I was kind of like. I was like, well, I, I get the pepper up front, right? Yeah. You get that little blast of pepper. And I find that the pepper goes to the background and is very enjoyable. I'm not a big fan of the pepper flavor. It the is there on the retro hair, yeah. though. This one is... Oh, I, I think you got it. What I like about it, it doesn't get me in the back nine. It gets me in the front part of my palate. Yeah. Which it's this subtle. Way it doesn't, yeah, right. It doesn't stay there. It yeah. Just, it it, yeah. it complements mm-hmm. the cigar itself. It's a complimentary flavor. I think yeah, that's absolutely. a great way of putting it. Oh, absolutely. Um, and the other a cigar smoker so I was I smoked a couple of them and I'm like I, I can't pick up what the flavor is I'm like it's somewhere in between like cocoa and espresso and everything else in between and what really I, one of the reasons I think I really like the cigars it really kind of helped me define the difference between the cocoa the coffee and espresso which I think are three very different flavors and mocha and, and mocha mm-hmm. is even like there yeah. are different kind of shades of coffee and chocolate flavors you get from cigars so I'm like what is the flavor in the cigar and I'm reading I read a couple of reviews and I'm, again acigarsmoker.com described it as sweet espresso and I think that's the most accurate description of the flavor profile I probably smoked half a dozen of these cigars since they came out and so is everyone else and I think we're all pretty much in agreement that there's a sweet component to it but that the flavor is of espresso correct and, and the most important thing the profile is what you like I mean if we don't pick up the nuances that we're saying that's fine as long as you enjoy the smoke for what it is that's most important to the smoker himself. Now they say the strength is a medium full. I, I don't. I don't get the. Fullness. It's not true to full. I, I think I, it's medium. It's strength, a strong full yeah. flavor. It's a strong Ooh. medium. Yeah, I would agree on the strength being medium, and I think the strength of the flavor increases in the smaller size, the yeah. less oh, than yeah. it does in the belly. Oh, the, 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 but that's me yeah, personally. Yeah, like nicotine-wise, as far as strength goes, I think it's medium. Yeah. I think that the flavors that this thing gives off is full. I mean, the thing just pours flavor. Like no other cigar that I've smoked that has come out of IPCPR. The flavors are very, very prominent. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the things that kind of led me to being able to pick out the flavors because they're so bold and prominent in the cigar. There's no... There's no getting around to it. Yep. You get the pepper and you get that sweet espresso flavor. I what, think I, what I love about a cigar that's uh, not newly released but has been on the market is so balanced for a young cigar. And mm-hmm. I think the aging on this has got a great potential. I really do. I mean, uh, to see what's going to do in another 
six months to eight months down the road. And, yep. And I think it's going to be even more yeah. enhanced. Now, right? having said that, I did give out the Lauro 107 Toro. Mm -hmm. I've been aging my humidor for about a year and a half. To some people who aren't as regular cigar smokers as we are, I didn't want to overwhelm you guys, I think, with, the, with this stick at lunchtime. I think it might be for the newer, you know, I don't smoke a cigar every day kind of person. This is a lot of cigar for you to take down at lunchtime. Ben, I don't know how you ended up with a 107. I don't know. I was just handing them out and Ben grabbed one. You're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I know you sold the last one. I have an extra right here. If you yeah, want to switch up, Ben, I'll give it to yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, I'm just kidding. There's only one we way to prove it. Right? The beer tap you have here? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, what are we drinking okay. again, actually, Paul? What is this? Beer. Uh, with, well, it's very good <laughs> beer. <laughs> with, I can't even With Crick? No, beer's on the beer. Wow. Sorry. Oh, okay. Thank oh, you guys. so much. Uh, that's all right. I'm pretty sure you got them. Don't use the a B in front of it. And that's how you, you drop it. Right. Fit crack. Exactly. Whatever. After a couple of It's minutes, a German wheat ale. Yeah. Absolutely. How's that? Absolutely. Is it German or Belgian? No, it's Belgian. Belgian. It's Belgian. Absolutely. It's a Belgian wheat ale. It's I lost mine. That's so, phenomenal. Uh, and, uh, and what we're all about here is... Uh, Let me buy you guys a round of drinks. <laughs> oh, thank you. Jack, if you want to Jack, fill up a bunch of... nothing better. Oh, thank you, my friend. This yeah, is Jack, what I thank need. You. Um, have we... Uh, so how, how much are we into the cigar itself? We're just touching. Yeah. So we just, just when you sat down, we just started. I was just about to go through the sizes. Mm -hmm. um, so it comes in a two. I don't understand the numbers. Uh, anyway. I, I, whatever. It's a two, a five, a seven, a nine, and an eleven. If you want to play that in your local yeah. lottery, yeah. maybe that'll work out for you. If you do, you can cut me a check for ten percent. Uh, so there's a number two Bellicoso, which is what. Uh, Stogie Santa and I are smoking five and a half hey, by one, or? 54 Bellicoso. Um, we also have uh, number five, the Robusto, a five by 50. And uh, if you want to fill that up, Jack, that'd be great. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have a Petite Lancera, which is the size that Tim is smoking. That's a number seven. That, that Look at that white seven. ash, baby. Six by 42. Now, Phenomenal. I like that size. I find the draw to just be a little too snug for me. And I think that's what I'm finding in some of these smaller ring gauge sizes is I tend to like a looser draw than some of those are provided. Um, and we'll touch on that more through the show. I don't know. I find on that. this particular one, it draws fine for me. But again, I think the flavors are more intensified in the smaller. Because yeah. of that. Because of it. So I would tend to smoke this after dinner where I would go for the belly and short belly. No, that's, that's a great day, point. But that's, that's um, so there is a petite bellicoso, of which I have one of, uh, four and three quarters by 48. And there is a petite robusto, uh, four and a half by 52. Now, I'm going to make a box purchase on these. And I think, thank you, Jack, regardless of how the smaller size is uh, smoke, I think I want the larger size. Uh, I think you get more for your money. And I think, um, you know, I, I just think having the larger, longer stick is um, <laughs> more versatile. Um, maybe. I, I don't like you know? saying more for your money. I think that the taste profile, I'm always on a smaller ring, and I'm surprised. Like the petite, I really, really enjoy. And I'm on a flip side of Paul. This is what the best part about cigars. No one's on the same page all the time. I think the draw on that's impeccable because I just have seen to get probably a little more pepper up that yeah. than I do up this. Absolutely. But I find this, this belly, to me, has more balance. Yeah. That's me. I mean, I got the I same can. off the short belly. I enjoy yeah, the short yeah. belly. Uh, and, and again, I just think like the same versatility. Probably you could use that, but any any line of cigar is is, is well worth it. It's, it's, it's weight in gold. I really do. It's just a very versatile. All of them. I can I can smoke this in the morning. I can smoke it in the afternoon. It makes no difference to me. Box worthy. Uh, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Absolutely, Box Worthy. I think we're all in agreement on this. Oh, there, there. And I'd be very surprised if it doesn't end in the top ten list of the year. Oh, so yeah. We'll no, I, I, I this totally exceeded agree. my expectations that I rather I, – I really was you – know, uh, shout out to Jeremy again and uh, Jose. They were just, you know, pumping this up. And, and I said, oh, wow, there's a lot of a lot of uh, hype to live up to. And as usual, they lived up to it. Excellent. Uh, so we're just going to do our uh, Smokes of the Week. And uh, on this uh, on this show, uh, there's no segment. I think we've got enough uh, enough smokes to talk about. Certainly, as we've uh, been uh, kind of on a hiatus for the past couple of years. This beer is fit. And I tell you what, though, it's not a bad pairing with cigars. Uh, you're just I, have, I have to say, yeah, it, I guess you're so I, nice. Yeah, <laughs> a, a lot of pairings though with beer and cigars go horribly wrong. Um, there are some that go really well together. I would say this one's like somewhere in between, like. 
it goes it, it doesn't ruin either experience like it doesn't overpower or ruin no. the cigar flavor and the beer right. flavor doesn't right. yeah for not being a porter or a stout i think it does very well yeah like, yeah very versatile we'll just you know what we'll get a keg of this every week yeah, there we <laughs> go. No so we, we have a full keg of this beer. i ordered a log but we got a full keg so we got a lot it of beer come in log, that's yeah. why. check in check in later at around six o'clock and you'll see how that pans out <laughs> yeah ollie we should take a picture of that <laughs> before and after that's right so the uh tatawahe noea uh i think that's what that's a picture of it, it could be it looks like one the petite casador though but it doesn't look like the foot is closed on it what do you think, Sylvia? I, I don't think that's another one. We're talking to the reserve, or are we talking I, the regular no, Noaya? That's well, a regular one. That's a, that's a Cazador. Mm. Or is that a Noaya? That's a Noaya. That looks like a regular one. That's regular Noaya. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that is what I saw. Miami blend. Yeah. So this is the one that uh, there was, was a box from like 2008 or something. Yes. I ended up with a bunch from. How does that work out? Yeah, I have no that. idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a few of those left. Those yeah. are those are, um, those are just awesome, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, I think it, really is it good. a coffee cocoa flavor profile? I'm trying to remember what I smoked. It is, uh, I didn't get a lot of coffee out of it. Uh, More cocoa than coffee. coffee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of earth to it. Also. I yeah. believe I actually reviewed one from the site way back in November. Like, I know I because we had those. We did. We had those kicking around. They were probably from 2008 or something yeah. like that. And they are certainly box worthy. I think. Uh, That's what I said. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if it's uh, a thing like when they were blended and rolled in 2008 and now they've aged, they're really awesome. Mm-hmm. Or if, you know, the new ones that are coming out, if you were to buy a brand new box of Noe as an agent for five years, do they taste the same? And I think that kind of goes back to something we touch on the show is not even no. close. Every crop is different, different no matter right. how exactly. hard you try to keep it it's the same. Every Mother crop Nature is will different. make that change. Yeah. Yeah. So I think wine. there's a lot of parallels to the wine industry where, you know, this vintage of... In our case, Tatawahe Noeas uh, is very good. So if you get your hands on some 08 Tatawahe Oh, no, it's good too. I bought a whole box of That's like what Tim and I we did. We were talking about the J21, the early release on the J21. Yep. Excuse me, please. Absolutely delicious. And the new ones are still good. Don't get yeah, me good. wrong. They're different mm-hmm. though. They lack the creamy finish that those early ones had. And yeah, they got a little more bite to them. I think, yeah. I think you're right because I've got a newer box of J21s. And every time someone sees it, they're like, is that a. Is that an older box of J? I mean, no. It's you, can tell, you can tell about it old. The, the, the band is different. It's right. J21. Yeah. Uh, Tim, over to you. So I smoked uh, something that you gave me, Paul. Actually, I smoked quite a bit of stuff you gave me. Um, first one is kind of a no-brainer. The La Aurora Preferidos Cameroon Robusto. <laughs> Those counting at home, I have. Is, a, is that the first ash of the day, Paul? Oh, no. I ashed on my laptop like five <laughs> times this morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got to bring back how many times I, Paul I, ashes on himself. I actually contest. think I, I ashed one. Yeah. Yeah. No rule. No. we got to smoke with no pants on. No, we will not on. ash anymore. Not only did I ash on my laptop myself, but I ashed on Josh. There's a reason right. I'm not sitting next to you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and the wind like took it and carried over when like in his shorts. All right, next show, man. Maybe we need to give away one of our new Stogie Geeks. I ash on myself and need to clean up towels. Yes, <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> the contest for the next show is going to be how many times will Paul ash on himself right. during the course of the show? Mm-hmm. So, next show. guess high ten. So, all right, <laughs> moving on. Uh, Cameroon Robusto La Aurora. Uh, what can I say? You know, same blend as the Preferidos Figurados. Uh, filler is Dominican, Cameroon, and Brazilian. Binder is Dominican, and the wrapper is an African Cameroon. Um, Cedar Spice, everything nice. I really love these smokes. Not my favorite Vitola in this blend. I think the Lance is. I know you guys will probably oh, agree. The Cameroon Lancero is just a sexual experience. Yes. 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 You put five, but, four or uh, five years of age on those bad yeah, boys. And it's like it's, it's amazing so how we got a hold of those, Stogie uh, Sam. Yes, and he's yeah. smiling at me and winking because he has a whole bunch he's hiding from himself. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, man? The my, Robusto is solid. Thanks. My security on my humidors, awesome. Yeah. I figured out that the key for each lock is universal. Ah. <laughs> so I have two different model humidors, but the key works in both. Awesome. <laughs> Good thing to know. So does a butter knife, right? <laughs> um, certainly, you know, box worthy, I think. Um, I would hold out for the Lance Arrows personally, but I wouldn't hesitate. Yeah, the Cameron Robusto is so different from the Lance. I mean, I smoke yeah. the Cameron Robusto when I'm kind of like knocking around and it's not, yeah. you know, the, the sole thing I'm doing. I'm not sitting down smoking a cigar and having a drink or whatever. Um, it's like one of my pool cigars. Ooh. It's just a consistent flavor profile, easy to smoke. Um, you don't have to pay a whole lot of attention to it to get the flavors from it. 
The Lancero, you can pick them up on cheap too. But I tell you what, size matters so much because the Lancero is totally different. Here we go. Here we go. Size matters. Sorry, that's what she said. The Lancero though is a totally different smoking experience. You have to pay attention. The subtle changes. It's fabulous. Absolutely. Back to you, Paul. Uh, EP Carrillo Short Run. I think this is a 2011 Robusto. Mm -hmm. 2011. I mean, wow, what a flavor bomb. I had this with a cup of coffee, and it was absolutely fantastic. You didn't reply to my comment on this picture last night. I commented on this picture. Oh, did you? Yeah. I, I said Why don't you read it out loud? Oh, so I'll read exactly what I wrote, and then I'll read okay. Tim's comment. I wrote, wow, what a flavor bomb. This goes well with coffee. I nearly wet myself. <laughs> absolutely fabulous smoke. Box worthy. Tim chimed in with his comment and wrote, Paul, this is God. You should give all these to Tim. He's a super nice guy and fixes the alignment of your pictures. That is all. The big stogie <laughs> in the sky. That's wow. Uh, I think I only have like one or two of these left. Of one. Yeah, the, the Robusto from... You, um, I you ordered some say, of these a couple months ago. I gave you the larger size because I had a whole box of the larger size. And these, was, these are the original short yeah, runs. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the original EP Carrillo short runs. I want to say that was 2011. Yes. Could have been 20... Was it 2011 or 2010? No. It was January 2011. January 2011. Right. It was when these... The came out. Yeah. yeah. So... I agree 100% with a cup of coffee. Oh, my... Oh, my Lord. Yeah, just unbelievable. Fantastic. Okay, back to you, Tim. So I smoked something. I'm not sure you guys have had this before. So you saying you might have um, the regular San Cristobal classical line. Oh, that's a, yes. Uh, I've never had this smoke. You know, I've had the the um, Connecticut wrap is the um, the Elegancias, yeah. which we're a fan of. I've had the um, is it the Del Souls? That's a Maroon Run. Yeah, Elegancia. 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 Yeah. Hey. hey. Um, but this is the first time I, I've actually smoked one of these. Um, Rex, longtime listener, Rex Mercer sent, sent some of these up to me. Thank you, Rex. Um, I hit him back with some lobsters. Well, no, I gave you one of but these unbanded. You gave me this one unbanded? Not this size, but a larger size, same uh, blend. Oh, yeah. you guys see I'm being and I haven't spoke yet. Yes. Oh, okay, well, there you go. I gave that one away. <laughs> Is that the last one you gave me? Uh, it must have been, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't spoke that yet, so. Okay. okay, so we just revealed the unbanded. I gave him. <laughs> Oops. I, I, yeah. Hey, that's all good. Now, it's all good. Now I'll look forward to smoking. Now you, you know what it is. Now yeah. I can smoke it. Um, I really loved it, man. Really rich flavors, chocolate coffee, perfect draw and burn. Not sure how much age was on the stick. It poured tons of smoke. I mean, I'm talking Liga Pavada tons of smoke. I enjoyed every single second of it, and um, once I looked up the price of six to seven dollars a cigar, it's definitely a win all around. Um, I say box worthy on these. Oh, Are those yours, Paul? All those padrones? No. Oh my god! So I we totally forgot. We're gonna take a little uh, a break here. If you're uh, listening to the Stogie Geek Show, we have uh, something to auction off. Okay. And I think we're gonna the way to do it is we'll do a silent auction. That's, so yes. you send email to stogiegeeks at gmail dot com with your bid. Okay. Okay. This is for. Uh, we'll, close out, we'll close it out. We'll close it out maybe tomorrow sometime mm -hmm. to give some people some time. Uh, if we don't get tomorrow any, midnight, well, if we don't get any bids, we'll have to release the podcast and then still submit some bids. Okay, so whatever it takes. Start bidding at twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ben, well, let's, 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 let's talk that. about what they're bidding <laughs> on. <laughs> Stokey Santa has <laughs> donated. Is no, <laughs> no, this is I should. Geeks crew. This yeah, is so crew. if you're in the Stokey Geeks or Paul dot com group, you're ineligible to. Well, I guess you wouldn't be. No, no money's it's money for charity. For so charity. where's the money going? First okay, all. so the yes, money is going to go to breast please. cancer research. Okay. That's uh, what it's all one about. of the two charities that we vetted to, to donate to, we will um, collect the money from you and immediately transfer it to charity. Or if you want to be trustworthy about it, we trust that you will go make the donation and send us the re copy of the receipt or something. We'll, we'll work it out. Whoever wins, whatever it takes. Please, whatever. Please, if it's please, easier to please. send us the money and we'll donate, we can do that. Or great, you can donate great. and send us the receipt. How's that sound? Yes. But great. the way you'd uh, you bid on the silent auction is to send an email to stogies at gmail.com. And what you're bidding on is... Drum roll, please. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is the, the Padron Family Reserve sort of pack from Stoky Santa. Uh, in here, I have, uh, I'll hold it up for the camera, uh, a Padron Family Reserve 45th Anniversary Maduro. I have a 44th Anniversary Maduro. I have a 46th Anniversary Maduro. I have a 1926 Series 40th uh, Anniversary uh, Maduro Torpedo. And I have a 1926 80th 
uh, double torpedo. Now, I'd say now, I'm probably holding... I'll tell you exactly. $50, $100, 50, no, $100, $175, bucks $175 worth of cigars in my hand right now. And it is tax deductible, I believe. And this is a tax deductible donation. Um, so, I mean, you at least have to give us $175 to oh, get into absolutely. this. I mean, that's what they cost me. Now, not only is retail $175 on those, most of those are impossible to find. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good luck finding all five of these. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I think Mr. J's from on a smoke shop may be the only place you yes. can possibly buy all of these. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, all five of those. And, I mean, these are, I smoked every single one of these, and they are... Magical. It's a magical experience. Even when you find them, they're usually not at the suggested retail price. Yeah, that that's we're, suggested, we're suggested retail. Yeah. Right. So send in your silent bids uh, to stogiegeeks at gmail.com to help out. Um, the winner of the highest donation will receive a Patron we should wait. magical five pack. We should it wait out for yeah. a week after we release. Yeah, so a week after we release, we'll close it out. So let me grab a picture of that before the end of today, and I'll make sure it goes Wake up in the show yeah. notes yeah. when we post. So. And that's when the story gets through. And I'll make sure it gets out to the Twitterverse and the Facebooks and the BOTLs of the world. Too, so. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, okay. Uh, next one on my list. Uh, Cuenca. Cuenca Blanco. Cuenca Blanco. Cuenca y Blanco. Lonsdale Club. I have to admit, I had some problems with this size. You did. My, no, as Toby Santa says, if there's a construction problem to be found, I'll be the one to find it. Uh, the first two I smoked were plugged. The third was a little tight. I'm not even going to weigh in on the flavors because I think my flavor profile was a little bit tainted uh, on this Lonsdale Club. Sounds like it. Um, so this is a 6 and a half by 44. It's an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper um, and Dominican and Nicaraguan uh, binder and filler. Uh... I, I did try the Corona after that. How was that? I think it's okay. I mean, I think it's like a try one kind of thing. I, I have to admit it doesn't it doesn't uh, tickle my fancy as far as the blend and flavor profile goes. Uh, I think it's a good smoke. Um, it's it just not something that I, I see myself smoking a whole lot of. Um, and, and a lot of that's my personal preference too. No, no Tim, did you do the Lonsdale at all? I have not. I have smoked several of... Well, yeah, I did, actually. I smoked yeah. some of the Lonsdale Clubs. Three of them, actually, in the last what week. What was your predominant flavor that you got out of that? It changes up a lot. I get yeah. some cocoa up front. Um, it goes into some leather and pepper after that. Slight pepper. Slight. Yeah. And then it changes again and mellows down on the last third. Um, I think it's a very complex cigar that it's easy to miss a lot of flavors if you're not paying attention to it. Um, and that could have been my problem. I had one that had a large void in the middle. The okay. other two smoked perfectly, but I did have one with a large void in the middle. I, I'm going to uh, try the other sizes because no. I think it might be a size thing. I just haven't found a size that I like. Mm-hmm. Maybe some of the other sizes will more easily uh, allow me to pick up on some of the flavors. The question I got to ask, the last third of that cigar, oh. what did you think of the last third? Not my favorite pot. I got an interesting interesting flavor out of it. I think we were talking about it. Yeah. We were trying to figure it out. Potpourri, I think we came out with. Yeah, I or, couldn't. I got like a tea. Flavor. Tea. Yeah, the okay. Tea would be an interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got like a tea. I, I, I wasn't really, the last third wasn't really where I wanted to be. Yeah. I, I don't know. That was me. The first third I was, okay, this is, this is good. That's where I want to be in the middle. You're a coffee drinker, not a tea drinker. Yeah, something, whatever. I'm drinking something all the time, but. Would I you can't. say it's unbalanced or it's just a flavor profile? Preference? I think that's a, that's a flavor, flavor profile difference. I yeah. don't think it's anything about I agree. It is what it is. Yeah. I don't think that's going to change. And, and I'm sure. I think when you go from leather or, or a slight pepper to tea, that's very difficult. I mean. It is. It's not a good, not a switch off, a good balance. Not a good it. transition. No, it, it, again, transition, balance, whatever you put it. And it left me. If it was reversed and it finished off the way it started, I think that would remind me more of the cigar. It, it, it was good. I enjoyed it, but I was left a little underwhelmed. What I said about it was I think it's an incredibly complex cigar, which is a nod to the blenders and their talents. Um, however, for me personally, I would agree that, especially that last third, it's not a flavor profile that I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I would recommend people grabbing one or a five and give it a try though because oh, I think absolutely. some people will absolutely love oh, it that's gonna be, oh I agree 100%. and I would personally grab one of each size and give it a go but. based on everyone's assessment of this cigar it makes me want to go try more like I was just I was missing something here that's why I'm not rating it until 
It doesn't burn, right, man? That's burn is everything, right? Yeah, construction yeah. is everything. Well, my first two were, were plugged, and I mean, I, I'm willing to overlook that if I can go buy a couple more. They're not, I'm, you know, I'm happy with that. Now, what's the retail on these six to seven? Is yeah, that- and they go anywhere from like seven to eight fifty. Depend again. We're we're we're, we're looking at a Rhode Island based yeah. cigar yeah. or cigar packs is fifty cents a stick. So if you see it more expensive, it's not the person. It's just. Your, your local taxes. So. And I, I have to say, I'm probably biased here, and if this was another cigar maker, maybe I wouldn't be as patient with it, but having met Jose Blanco in person uh, and knowing his reputation yep. and the other cigars he blended, yep. I, I am really, really... And Jorge de Nicaragua, these are... Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I totally to respect him, so I, I want to make sure I'm giving it a fair chance, because I felt like I was kind of uh, missing something. So, Not a bad smoke. I'd say try one. Yes. Try one of every size. I think it's going to be my well, inspiration. That's it. It's, it's, it's exactly. Everyone has a different palate. Every, whatever the cigar you happen to be yeah. smoking, things will change. Tim, you want back to you? or Sure. Um, I reviewed the PG Symphony 20 Bombones Extra. Uh, we talked about this on the last show. I hadn't smoked mine yet. I uh, took down a couple and did a formal review on the site. It's linked um, up there. Um, I really enjoy this line. We talked a lot about this line. Same great flavors as the other Vitolas, uh, but in a compact 35 by 46 format. Um, took me about 35 minutes to smoke. Loved every single <coughs> second of it, except for the price. Um, I believe these are 850 a whack. Is that correct? That's a small So What's the size on it again? 35 by 46. That's a small cigar for 35 minutes, minutes, both of them. Each one. And, that's, um, and that's not taking it down quick. That's a, no, I was smoke. pacing myself. Yeah. Most people will smoke quickly. That's like a 15 minute, 20 minute smoke. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly box worthy with a side note on the price. I mean, I yeah. think if these were a buck fifty less, it would be a box in my window right now. Yeah. Um, because you know me, I love short smokes. I love this blend. It was awesome. I agree. But, I agree. Um, but Paul, you want a big fan? You want a big fan of this particular size? Uh, I didn't try the smaller one. I tried the other one. You tried the belly. I tried the belly. It was easy to do the bumbos? No, I haven't tried oh, the bumbos yet. I, I thought for some reason you said you weren't overly impressed. Um, it made me feel better self-esteem-wise. As I, <laughs> oh, like the mixture yeah. of the size. Yeah, the, the mixture of the size. Yeah, Compared to what, the Salamone, which is <laughs> seven and a half inches yeah. long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel far go. inferior Trash to the Salamone. Well, I tell you what, though. I, I can beat you on the price thing. So, I, I don't think this is a cigar that many of us have probably smoked. Uh, this is a Davidoff White Edition 2012. No, I haven't. Yeah, I'm still. curious about this. So, these just came in to uh, one of the local shops here. In fact, I think I walked in hours or like the day after they came in. Um, they'd gotten a large shipment of them. I might have taken the first two out of the box that was on display. Um, now, I've heard good things about this cigar, and, and I have to say, this is an amazing smoke. I think Ben um, from Nice Tight Ash mentioned it when he was on the show. Yeah, and these are awesome. Um, so like I said, you know, they're just wonderful flavors. Not a very grassy profile at all. I know sometimes you pick up a Davida or a Zeno, and it gives you that herbal grassy flavor, and mm-hmm. we'll talk about one of those sticks that did that to me. It was actually more expensive than this one. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah. Wow, and that was, um, it's not one that you've smoked either. This yeah. is another one that was just... This is not like that. It needs a little time to rest. It's got a little spice and heart, a little, little bit of, you know, like youngness mm-hmm. that I could detect. But again, these had just come in. Very complex, provided a great smoking experience. I really wasn't able to identify all the flavors. I had just, you know, kind of smoked mm-hmm. one. Um, I do have another one. These are $22 a stick. It's a yeah. Bad. yeah. No, uh, no, no question I mean, I got, not last, unusual. What about the last third? The last third was good on this one. I smoked this one right down to the It's a complete reverse of most days. So this Davidoff I smoked earlier uh, was one of their reservas. Yeah, like that's as far as I could get on it before it went out. Other than most. And I find some Davidoffs you can smoke right down to the end, some not so much. And that varies by their blend. Uh, this white edition is a great blend. Uh, I think it's right up there with the Colorado Claro. Really? Um, wow. However, it commands, I think, a much higher price tag. Yeah. Um, certainly probably $6 more a stick than some of the, the Claros uh, that the we found. The Claro boosters I picked up. But it's in, it's prob- I'd say it's in that kind of flavor profile with a little more complexity. Right? Really? Yeah. Interesting. It's, this is really good. It's a really wow. good smoke. And just say that for no, heads up. I'm not go by, a, did I say this was box worthy? Um, I don't know if I'd pay two hundred and twenty dollars for a box, but it's certainly box worthy. But take price into consideration. Just a heads up to the listeners: these have been hitting the intertubes too. I see yeah. them around on the internet sites. They've awesome. Yeah, and you might save a dollar or two. I think uh, it was twenty-one fifty yeah. 
for oh, about it makes a difference now. The twenty one fifty is a bargain. It's shit. a freaking bargain at that price, a right? Bargain. It's a, it's a bargain. bargain. Uh, so the wrapper is a Dominican Criollo. The binder is uh, Dominican Piloto, and the filler is Piloto Ligero Criollo Viso. Uh, Visas. Visas. Go more Go piloto <laughs> hybrid stop. pieces, just Corojo stop. pieces, <laughs> and San Vincent Lajero, all from the Dominican Republic. What was that again? Lajero. Yeah, Tim, what you were saying now. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that post is talking. You just mean yeah. Paul. <laughs> Stogie, see how Paul's being mean to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Is it is it is it Visas? I, I was going to say Viso, but that's that's, that's Nicaraguan. That's no, Viso is the cut of the Viso is the cut. Yeah, it's the prime. Visas. I don't know what Visas is. Visas. Visas. Must be a yo Visas. Okay. I may be saying Visas wrong. I don't. You should have spell checked and correct that on you. It's supposed to be Visa. No. Okay. No. Uh, that could be the plural of Visa. I'm not sure though. Very good. You're could be right. You don't oh, have to back I'm cigars. sure we're going to get correct. Someone's going to write it. Oh yeah. The right pronunciation. Yes. <laughs> Tim, back to you. <laughs> Speaking of overpriced Davidoffs, um, Paul. Ah. Oh. You gave me this, and I know you completely disagree with me, so... Yeah, this and I'm never it. giving you another one, either. I, you know what? <laughs> I, got, I gotta be honest, man. I don't want it. Oh. Uh, I don't want it. Uh, this is the Anniversario number one, which is a... You didn't like that cigar? I did not like it. I thought cigar. it was great. Now, in all fairness, all fairness, I smoked one. So it can happen. It, it could happen. It, it, it could, could be a I bad smoked one. one too, and it was a life changing experience for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I it was me too. I crawled under the table. I, I, I remember, wish you would go away, but oh uh, my god! I remember two years ago, or maybe it was about a year ago. I you bought just one. Recommended this cigar to me, and and Mark brings you in the back and shows it. Hey, look what this asshole bought. And, yeah, he does, yeah, you was talking <laughs> to too. <laughs> and it is it is very expensive, no. but I thought it was a great cigar. It's a good. It's a good. Cigar. Well, let let's, I, I, you know. Okay. Okay. Yep, him, yep, yeah. So no, it's price, let's just say hit the price. It's thirty six dollars a stick, right? Yes, thirty six dollars. Okay. Comes in a beautiful cedar tube, wooden wooden, wooden tube. cedar tube, See, beautifully smoke done. The tube. Yes, with the tube. Okay. Get rid of the tube before I say five bucks. Right. But <laughs> all right, um, I found it very mild and mundane, personally. Typical Davidoff grassy, but extremely extremely mild to the point where I couldn't even taste it. I smoked it in the morning. I knew it was going to be mild. I had read a little bit up on it. Um, I said in the end, I did a formal review on it. Check out the site if you want it. I said, try one. Because in all fairness, I smoked one. And I can't can't say anything worse or better about it after smoking one. So... Now, Paul, I said Oasis. This was, this was Oasis for me, man. Uh, I, I don't know if we smoked the same cigar or not, but... I this cigar changed up on me at least three times. Had this wonderful kind of cedar flavor, a little bit of spice up front. I'm pretty sure mellowed we out, this. kicked up in the end for me. I mean, this was like I was on a wild journey. I, I think Paul me. gave me a um, Dutch Masters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <put it, put laughs> <laughs> I did the old bait and switch. Oh, wait, on you. <laughs> Let's keep it nice. Uh, this cigar was Stokey Santa, have you smoked this? Yeah, I, I I don't get the hype. I think it's a good solid smoke there, but I I, I, I don't agree with your assessment. But I don't agree with yours either. I'm, okay. I'm somewhere in the middle. In the middle. In the middle tells the truth. I'm not blown away, but I'm I'm I must be in the minority. It, most if, people love it. If the price was a little lower, would you would you change your question. assessment? Uh, yeah, because value has a lot to do with a cigar. So if it was like twenty five dollars or twenty eight dollars, nope, I still wouldn't. Fifteen, fifteen, maybe fifteen, twenty pushing, pushing. So that, I mean, but me. you're still describing. A re- if you're going to pay fifteen or twenty dollars for a cigar, you're still describing a really oh, no, good oh, cigar. It, don't yeah. get me wrong. Oh, it is a good solid smoke. But I, mean, uh, I can say construction was good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I kind of wish it wasn't because I could have put it out. The two was a nice touch. <laughs> well, like I said, I I don't I, I found it. I thought it was complex. I mean, yeah, I got a lot of it. complexity on it. No, like I said, the, the, the spice was nice. And everything. Else. I, I, I agree with Tim. After that, would dissipate. It was like I was okay. Mm-hmm. What? Do something for me here. It just. It wasn't the worst smoke I smoked no. all week. All you gifted me something else that was the worst smoke of the week. Okay. Right? Ah, uh, we'll get to was that. It the <laughs> was it the another unbanded I gave you? It wasn't an unbanded. No. Oh, okay. We'll get to it though. Because I. So you have two unbanded from me then. 
No, you only gave me one on Bandit. Oh, then that's not. You the just same. gave me some dog rockets too. So that's not the same oh. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> dog rockets. Oh. Add that to the dictionary. I said to myself while smoking the other one, I said, "I hope Paul smoked ah, this because if not, I'm going to make him." But um, I know which one you're talking about, and both Stogie Santa and myself have smoked one. Perfect. We'll get to it. But I, I said I, with oh, the number no, one. No, the no, 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 no. <laughs> get to it now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say one more thing about the Annie number one. For the price, going back to the price, I would rather buy. Two David off Colorado Clouds, which I gifted Josh Coleman here recently, and he loves. Awesome. For the price of one of these. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. The, the, uh, the Colorado Clouds are the best blend. Hands that, down. That, I, I mean, yeah. if you don't like that, you got to be. Uh, that was a gem found. Down, yeah. Where they do, yeah. you got to really reassess your talent. I have yeah. two boxes of specialty Colorado Clouds in my yeah. unit. <laughs> That's, yeah. And the keys are universal. Remember that. Universal keys. Even if it's not Larry's, <laughs> <laughs> Larry's sitting right next to hop behind me. I'm sure you can handle it. So yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just curious to throw this out. Has anyone done the short story Maduros at all? Oh, this, love yes. that smoke. Awesome. Oh, my God. And they might be available, available at AtlanticCigar.com as of the moment. Oh, really? I, at we, MSRP. We have them already. Same thing. A whopping five ninety nine. It's a heads up. We'll yeah, get them. Nice. Short story Maduros are awesome. Yeah, they yeah. are. The best sellers, I wasn't... Overly impressed. It was okay. That short story always. I think I think they're both fabulous cigars. I think the bestseller. You're right. It's not as concentrated a flavor. Exactly. Same flavor is not as concentrated. Right. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that's just the size. That's and exactly. sometimes you don't want that small flavor concentration. No. Sometimes you want. You something won't. Oh, you, yeah. you can't miss any of them. Anyway, yeah. let's get back to what that. Josh, you have finally mentioned a cigar that I have smoked. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. That doesn't matter. Now, did you like it? I love it. Okay. Yeah. It, isn't it? It's a wonderful, wonderful blend. They, they just did a great job of that. Well worth the money, in my opinion, as a, oh, as a special that, occasion. Oh. Well, so. Um, so, I smoked a Jaime Garcia Reserva Especial Limited Edition Connecticut. Not a mouthful. Now, which Especial is this? Is the new one? Is yeah, this new, the, the, again, it's time to get confused. Okay. Here, so. Last year was the, was the Broadleaf, and they put the, the Connecticut in there. The now, single Connecticut. The single okay, Connecticut. Okay, got it. Now, they did the single Connecticut with... The but single uh, problem. Single, right. Okay. So this is a 2012. I'd say if you have a low tolerance for a mild Connecticut, this smoke is for you. I think a lot of people pick up the mild Connecticut's and go, ah, it right. just wasn't enough Mark for me. Junior. <laughs> this Connecticut has enough for your yeah. low tolerance Connecticut smoke. It starts off with spice and pepper, delivers mm. tons of flavor. I tend to, look, my, me personally, I like this cigar a lot. Uh, I said it was a fiver. Um, I tend to like my breakfast cigars to have a little more smoothness, right. not it's as not much spice and pepper. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So I mean, when I reach for Connecticut, something like, like the Elegancia, for yeah. example. No, I mean, how many times would you say? You now you just just made your point. When you want to have a cigar in the morning, it's usually Connecticut. This is too much for me. It's not too much, too much it's, but it doesn't. The yeah, flavor well, profile, yeah, it's not. It's you don't not. need a big breakfast with this one. <laughs> it's the no, same with the federal Connecticut's yes. from my father's. I tend to smoke them at lunch, not in the right. morning. They got a spice and pepper yeah. flavor profile to them. Uh, now this one though is fifteen dollars. Yeah, really? Yeah, it's a little mm -hmm. much for me. Uh, if it was around nine 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 ten dollars, I so we said it before. I, yeah, I would definitely. Now I'm surprised 15. because the federal release is only six dollars and seven dollars. And we've seen time and time again a direct extraordinary release from a manufacturer, typically lower price. Right. It is what it is. That's it. Uh, oh, so oh, yeah, oh, let's get back on the page about the unbanded. I want to get back to the one we were talking about. Uh, well, this wasn't yeah. an unbanded. The one I was talking about. Uh, uh, what's the one that we we said we? Mo, we uh, it begins with an M. Mombacho. 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 That's the one on my list. <laughs> Mombacho. I was surprised. I was surprised. So Tim, tell us about the Mombacho. Now, uh, I do have to say this one was gifted to us by a listener of the Paul dot com podcast. Okay. Uh, called up with me at a conference and said. These are uh, one of the favorites in my local shop. They're a little small boutique blend. Don't find them everywhere. Um, Stogie said and I smoked them last year, so the one you got had a year's worth of age more than the one that we smoked. Well, let me start with what I read up on as so far as the, um, the tobacco. Mombacho! It is Indonesian Sumatra. Sounds like a disease. And the blend consists of tobaccos from Jalapa Valley, Condigar, and Sumatra. This was a Robusto Extra at 5.5 by 50. It started mild with some hay and faint hints of coffee in the background, and then it completely went south, and I felt like I was smoking, I was sorry, I felt like I was looking in ashtray. So, uh, would you put this ahead or behind the Silverdale? Wow. That's a question. Wow. 
watching. <laughs> now the silver uh, the, the silver I think you described as smoking dog poop. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say ahead of the silver deal. <laughs> now that you've jogged to my memory, <laughs> uh, both lawn mulch. I was not impressed. Somebody I thought was it this one? Somebody on Twitter told me that this was a Asian release. An Asian really? brand. Yeah, yeah. It could have been. Yeah, it might have been a listener from Canada. I mean, our, our listeners are all over the world, so. But I, I'm, I might be getting yeah, confused with something else. I they, they, they have the, some kind of info on that. Be interesting to find out. I'll have to go back through my Twitter feed yeah, because somebody that. responded to me. It was either Twitter or Facebook. I thought said. this was a great cigar. I like the flavors from what I, I can remember. Because I thought it was good, right? I mean, yeah. you had the same assessment. Yeah. Like yeah. it was good. The dry draw. I, I was like, <laughs> it was dry. It was like exactly. Maybe that's where I'm getting the ashtray from. It was oh, very I dry. Like an ashtray. You know what I mean? But so like an ashtray. Like before we start an episode, or an ashtray after we like after was like yeah. I'm looking ashes out of an ashtray. <laughs> exactly. It was just very ashy and dry on my palate. Yeah. That's yeah. the first half inch was fantastic. I enjoyed it, and then it just it just went south. Um, I was pleasant, really, really surprised. Yeah, for like a brand you like never a, heard yeah. of. You're like, what is this? Yeah. Anyway. It almost seemed like a sandwich cigar for me. What I mean by that, like I think I really it seemed like a uh, short leaf and a long leaf. Combination, yeah. Because what usually happens when you smoke it, it add that banana peel to the ash. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It off, so I'm not saying that it is. There wasn't much information on the institutes about the no. smoke, and I believe what I, information I did get, I got from the manufacturer's website. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I had the same experience. Uh, I smoked a Don, uh, Arturo Fuente Don Gran Anniversario. Yeah. This one it comes in those uh, the uh, gift sets, the black uh, shiny yes. box uh, story yes. story boxes they call them. Yep. Um, this was from uh, the last year, not the recent release, but last year. It, what a wild ride! I mean, the first third was spicy with a little pepper. The second third started pouring this awesome sweetness flavor, and the final third really amped up and like would kick my ass and put me in a cigar coma. Age potential is uh, is huge. Um, you know, I, I I would say like box worthy on these, but it's not a boxable purchase no, stick. No. Right. Uh, well, I think if you like, especially if you like the Fuente uh, blends and flavor profile, uh, I put five or just you know buy one of those story boxes for yourself. I picked up mine on auction. Uh, they retail for one hundred and sixty dollars. You get four or five cigars in it. Um, That's a good price. I picked mine up. I picked mine up for a hundred. I think. Yeah, that's a an auction. Did you buy yeah. two? Uh, no, Mark Jr. bought one and I bought one. And we decided because we're just kind of gay like that that we're going to smoke them together. <laughs> <laughs> so every time we smoke one, he, he comes over and we smoke the same cigar. And we, hey, hey, Tim, I just want to put this out there. You know, did you get an offer about this? <laughs> I guess well, so you had to be there for the auction oh, deal. It's oh, a special. It. Mark okay. Jr. have a special. Th- a yeah, special yeah, friendship. Yeah. I see how it is. They were smoking the same second. We, we hold hands. Was this at a rest area? We sing uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very it's special. Yeah, yeah. Just kidding, my friend. Love you, dude. All right. Well, not not like in that, that way. <laughs> <laughs> not even for a special cigar. All right. Hey, Tim, back know. to you. RC 184. I finally smoked the RC 184 that Mr. Stogie Santa gave me. I believe with four or five years of age on it. Five now. years of age. Yeah. Um, wow. I mean, the younger ones are good. Yeah, isn't it so this thing is magical. <laughs> oh, isn't it? <laughs> um, oh. Best two hours of my weekend. Um, I mean, if you come across these and you, you want to age them, I fully recommend it. Certainly box worthy. Possibly Oasis. Oh, um, Oasis. I'd say a five-year-old is Oasis for me. Yeah, I, I, it's up there. Yeah. Um, I loved it. Thank you, Stogie Santa. That's oh, all I'm going to say. Um, we got a little bit of those left. Yeah, I, I think uh, Ben, he put it the same thing. He just enjoyed it. That's right. He usually yeah. sent him some. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, just smooth, smooth, smooth. Isn't it? Yeah, it's just, just a subtle nice... flavors that just keep changing. Oh, yeah, you got a lot more out of it than you did the new I'll tell you yeah, what. Yeah. It was amazing. By the time you get done with that cigar, it, it changed not only the flavor, but the strength. Yeah, I'll tell you, the strength was pretty good in the last third. Uh, I had a Nat Sherman Timeless Hermoso, yes. so five and a quarter by fifty-four. Mm-hmm. I, I I liked the nice sweet flavors that came off this cigar, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed that. I just it was very very dry, mm-hmm. um, and I couldn't get over the dryness of it. Um, I will try others. I, this is my first Nat Sherman. Right. Um, like I said, I like the flavor profile, um, the dryness. I just put it as a, a two and a half try one. Yeah. So that's the first Nat Sherman cigar we've ever featured on the show. That's, that's yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. 
Uh, last one on my list. Um, and minus the 184, uh, see 184, I think this would be my story of the week. Um, this is the LFD Colorado Oscuro number three. Um, smoked this Tuesday night after working about 20 straight hours at work, cleaning up some malware. Um, crap day at work, I said. Great smoke at night. Um, this gorgeous Robusto, perfect burn and draw. Some leather, molasses, and pepper up front. Strength and flavors kicked up as the smoke progressed by the end of the second third. Uh, retrohaling made me sneeze several times oh, from the amount strong. of pepper. <laughs> Uh, by the last third, I mean, the strength was just kicking my, you know what? I loved every second of it. Bought a few more today at the shop. Yep. Looking forward to it this weekend. Oh, I just hope they release the chisel. The chisel was my best cigar this year. Okay. Hands down. Hands down. Um, I say definitely box worthy, um, especially if you intend to age. Um, the last thing I'm going to say about the smoke is it was able to hold up against my PD Scott I was drinking, which is What's that? That's a, now, I'm a sorry, challenge. Can, which, which smoke was this again? LFD Colorado Escrow Number 3, the Robusto. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mr. Santa has them in the shop. I recommend checking them out. I think I did. I think Mr. I did, Santa. I think I, did, I think I did smoke one, and it was good. I enjoyed it. Now, the rep was in the shop this morning, and I asked John him Carney. Yeah. while you were out back, you know, is this the release from last year? Because these were released last year. He said, no, this is the re-release. Re-release, right. Um, but they I'm loving them. Yeah, right. They kept a low profile at the, uh, yeah. at the show this year. Last year, they, they really hyped it up, and they, they were gone. They, they were never, gone. They, they never yeah. expected the amount of um, uh, the hype that it, that it received, and it was supposed to be another release, and that it did. Yeah. There was supposed to be another release, I, everything from November to December, whatever. They did say they were going to release more in the future. Yes. But, yes. Um, and they're going to age great. And like you're saying, the, the strength... Is, is up there, but it's just so delicious. It's so delicious, you don't care. No, yeah. exactly. It's, it's not all strength and no flavor. It's, it's yummy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I've got probably uh, four, five more smokes. Uh, so quickly, Katawahe Kahonu 2012 Habano. Yeah, how was uh, this? It was a tad young, fantastic smoke. Love this blend. Goes great with coffee. Full of flavor. Um, I'm calling these box worthy because uh, I, I enjoyed it that much. i, I got to put you on the truth meter now. We've had the Sumatra. Broadly, and now the Habano in 2012. But everybody at the table here, 2012 versus 2003, which one do you like? I have not smoked the Habano yet, mm -hmm. but if I was going to compare the um, Broadleaf and the Sumatra to the 2003, I go with the 2003 hands down. Okay. Yeah, I'm still liking the 2003. Yeah. I, I, 2003. I'm, I'm, yeah, me too. I, I'm not saying the 12, I didn't get into the hype as much as most. Good smoke, Ooh, good solid smoke. But the 2003 and the 2006. Maybe I'll take the 12 over the 6, but not over the 3. I smoked a Zeno Platinum Crown Series Double Grande Tubo. Oh, but I smoked that? the cigar in, inside the tube. Now, who makes Zeno? Is it David Off? Yeah, yeah, yeah David Off okay. makes Zeno. So, as you, see, you can see the plume in the picture. So, I was all excited because I love plume. Um, this was a very smooth smoke, nice draw, perfect amount of smoke that came off it. The flavor profile was very grassy and very herbal. Now, I smoked wow. the whole thing, and if you're into that kind of grassy herbal profile, Some people that's the cigar for you. This is the cigar <laughs> for you. Um, if you you're not, it? did you finish the whole cigar? I did finish the whole cigar. Yeah. I, I'm start, I, I don't say I really like a cigar being this grassy and herbal, um, but I did finish it largely because I paid thirty-three dollars and fifty cents for it. I was <laughs> so damn it, I was going to finish it. Thing. I was going to smoke the whole thing no matter says what. Price doesn't matter. It sounds like smoking absinthe. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go. Uh, good I also smoked a Davidoff Colorado Claro Double R. Not as good as the other sizes in the blend. The flavors were kind of muted. Um, it didn't put off as much smoke as I would have liked. It may have been a little over humidified. Uh, it's been very, it was very humid out when I was smoking this. So um, okay, I'm saying try one to see if you like it, but the other sizes are way better, in my opinion, than the Colorado Claro. The, the cigar rep from Miami stopped in. And you say platinum. I think it's a platinum <laughs> series they're coming out with, like the Perforitos. Yeah. And the two. And uh, we, we got two samples. Unfortunately, we had it with them in the car for like two days. And we got to rehumidify them. I'm yeah. I'm really excited to see these. I'm really nice. excited to see those. Nice. Um, I also had an Opus X Forbidden X 13 Nascimento 1912. I wonder what Opus is. Whoa, what a great Opus uh, experience this was. I heard some great was. reviews. I mean, it's, it, it's not as much leather as a regular Opus. It's got a... Um, the sweetness there? Sweetness that off the wrapper. A lot of things going on. Um, I'm saying try one because these are expensive. And it didn't, like, overly wow me. Um, so that's why I'm saying try what one. About, what about the... 
the strength characteristics, which you find. It's out. not as strong as a regular bonus. Because these are uh, fresh I, I out of the box. I was like, one, I might like it. You, you should give this one a shot. Um, my smoke of the week, even though it didn't like turn out the way that it, uh, I had hoped, however, I smoked an Opus X Black Orchid Maduro. Oh, that's a sexy looking cigar, man. I was looking oh at the pictures my last night. God. Yeah. So, not like you expected. I, I, that's a, that's so, like listen a, to this. Probably the it. most enjoyable flavors I've ever experienced in the first third of this cigar. I mean, ever. I, I, it was Ben and Mark Jr. I, I was just lost in the first third of this cigar. I was like, oh my God, just pouring all kinds of wonder. I didn't even catch the first part, but I'm guessing this is the black one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just, oh my God. Then. In the second, third, and final third, those, like, wonderfulness dissipated. Now, it was still a very, very good cigar. It seemed like the first third was orgasmic. Yes. The second third, you were disappointed. And the third third, it wasn't as good as the first, but it was a little bit better than the second. That Are you saying that uh, once you go black, you never go back. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm saying fiver uh, on this one because I think they're just... Just a fiver? Just a fiver. As, I don't know. If I could buy a box maybe for just that first third, I wish I could cut the, <laughs> the first third off of like three of them and make a whole cigar out of it. The BBMF yeah. or this? Uh, BBMF. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Yeah. So, That's that concludes uh, this episode of the Stogie Geek Show. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We're going to take another break here and come back with more Paul.com. I thank all Stogie Geeks listeners. Don't forget yes, the please. Patron yes. Orgasmic 5-pack we got going on here. Supporting man. breast cancer yeah. research. Breast cancer research. The most important. Tax deductible. Submit your bids for that to stogiegeeks at gmail.com. Thank you awesome. very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye now. Bye-bye.